Hey folks, this is Chris Scotsman. Welcome to the Mero SDK tutorial on importing a custom avatar into BoneLab. I've resized my Unity window layout so everything fits into the canvas of the video. This is a fresh Unity project with the Mero SDK imported into it. The first step in making any mod is to create a palette, which will hold whatever crates make up the mod, in this case, an avatar. If the asset warehouse window is not visible, open it from the Stress Level 0 Void Tools menu. Make sure you name your palettes and crates well, as the names are used to create unique identifiers for your mod and deleting palettes and crates is not recommended. I found a suitable rigged mechanism model on Mixamo and dropped the FBX into a folder of the project. You will probably want to place the FBX file into its own folder as materials and textures will be extracted into the same folder of the model file. Drag the model from the project window into the scene. Reset the position of the avatar so that it resides at 000. zero, zero. Select the Materials tab in the Models Inspector. If your model does not seem to have any textures applied to it, you will need to extract them. A quick and easy way to do this is to select the Use External Materials Legacy option in the Location field. This will automatically extract the materials associated with the model and apply them to the appropriate meshes. If Unity prompts about normal map settings and needing to mark a texture as a normal map, click the Fix Now button. Next, click the Rig tab and make sure that the animation type is set to Humanoid. The Avatar Definition field should default to Create from this model. If you see a check mark next to the Configure button, then Unity has successfully auto-mapped the bones of the imported model. If you see an X or any console errors, click Configure. Look for any red indicators, as Unity will warn you of missing or incompatible bones or other issues. You may need to manually map bones if Unity gets confused about which finger bones should be applied to the hand in case of a model with only three fingers, for example. Many models, like this one, are not rigged with eye bones. But don't worry, Marrow has your back, and there's no need to break out Blender or other 3D software to alter the rig. Implementing an eye override will be covered shortly. Now that the model has been set up in Unity, take this game object and drag it back down into the project window to create a prefab. When prompted if you want to create a variant or original prefab, choose Original. Select the prefab in the hierarchy, and then open the prefab so it can be edited directly. Add the avatar script to the root game object. It is possible to fill out the bulk of the fields of the avatar script, but solid avatar functionality can be achieved by simply filling in the fields for the wrist bones, making sure that the body mesh has been referenced, and, if the rig does not have eyes, an eye center override is added to the prefab's root. By default, the avatar script will attempt to automatically add the main skin mesh renderer to the body meshes list. If the model has separate head or hair meshes, add them to the appropriate list. If specific wrist bones don't exist, the script will pre-fill those fields with hand bones as the best match guess. Tweak these fields as needed to best match your avatar. Until the minimum fields are completed in the avatar script, a red sphere will be visible in the scene view. Since this rig does not have the required eye bones, an empty game object named Eye Center Override will be added to the root of the prefab and placed into the Eye Center Override field. The Eye Center Override game object should be positioned between the eyes of the avatar. Once in place, a series of ellipse gizmos can be resized to fit the avatar's mesh. Adjusting these to snugly fit the contours of the avatar will avoid visual clipping issues in game. If you're unable to manipulate the chin or jaw handles, scroll down to the bottom of the avatar script and use the sliders if needed. Select the palette in the asset warehouse window and then use the inspector to add a crate. Set the type to avatar crate, give it a title, and set the crate reference to the avatar prefab. With the crate selected, clicking the Generate Packed Assets will create a rough preview of the avatar. The final step in Unity is to click the Pack Palette button in the Asset Warehouse window. This will pack your palette and all of its crates into a mod ready to be used in BoneLab. Copy the folder that appears once the pack process completes into your BoneLab Mods folder and start the game. 
You can verify the game has recognized your mod from the main menu. Navigate to a Bone Lab level and bring up the in-game menu by holding Y or B and selecting Avatars. If you do not see the Avatar option listed in the menu, you may need to progress your story. Navigate the Avatar menu until you see your custom avatar listed and select it. Congratulations, you've successfully imported a custom avatar into Bone Lab. See you in the void.